been saying that it's it's moved quickly this week, but it has felt like a long time that Calvin Phillips has been waiting to move on from Manchester City. And I think there's a sense in re of relief in the quotes that Calvin Phillips has given to the media today as well. We can go through a little bit of what he's had to say. He says, I'm uh, really pleased to be here. There's all, always been a lot of speculation about me moving to West Ham. So I'm really excited to get going now. There's so much to look forward to in the second half of the season for the club. And I can't wait to be a part of it. He goes on to say, there's an unbelievable group here and if I can come in and add the quality that I know I'm capable of, I'm sure we can give the West Ham fans plenty to be excited about between now and the end of the season. Those quotes just reaching us from Calvin Phillips this morning. And James, David Moyes has also spoken, hasn't he? Yeah, we know David Moyes has been such a long-term admirer of Calvin Phillips. He tried to sign him in the summer of 2022 when he left Leeds and went to Man City. But finally, David Moyes has got his man. He said, we're really pleased to bring a player of Calvin's quality to West Ham United. We've been big admirers of him for a long time. We believe that he'll add strength and competition to our squad. Calvin is an England international midfielder with proven Premier League experience. We're excited to welcome him into the group and look forward to welcome, working with him. So he's all set to team up with his teammates shortly and could feature next Thursday on deadline day against Bournemouth. And you will be there. Can't wait, can't <laughs> wait. Maybe some more signings as well. Maybe, yeah. maybe there's still a bit more work to do in this window. And just looking at the deal in more detail, it is a straight loan, no option to buy. Can you understand why there isn't an option to buy? Yeah, I can. Obviously, both parties were looking into that option to buy. It's something they've discussed, but I don't think they could agree upon what the right price would be at the end of this loan in terms of the price they'd pay. Because let's look at City's point of view. 18 months ago, they paid around £42 million to sign him on a six-year deal. So they want to recoup as much of that money as they can. But on the flip side, West Ham will be thinking, well, he's not played much for the last 18 months. We don't want to look to buy him for £30 million or anywhere near that because we're not quite sure what we're buying. It's so a risk. It makes sense. It, it would be a risk. But, of course, there isn't the option to buy. But at the end of this... Summer maybe has a really good Euros with England as well, and then that price would bump up a little bit more. So I think it leaves both clubs in a decent position. And, of course, it doesn't mean that Calvin Phillips won't move to West Ham in the summer. It just means, as part of this contract, there isn't a fee in place at the moment. So there still will be time to negotiate. It's a chance for Calvin Phillips to show just what a good player he is. It's been such a difficult time for him. It's a chance for him to help lead West Ham to, to more glory in Europe this season and to continue to rise up the Premier League table too. Flex, who would you say the straight low move benefits more? Manchester City or West Ham? I think, I think, I think it leaves them both in a, in a really strong position, actually. I think for, for West, from West Ham's perspective, they don't have to, to nail themselves down to saying, we must buy Calvin Phillips with an obligation for X amount of money, maybe 30, 40 million pounds, which obviously Manchester City will want to recoup as much as what they paid to Leeds um, for him. But from the side of Manchester City, it leaves that sort of valuation open to fluctuate. If Calvin Phillips goes to... West uh, plays extremely well for West Ham now and maybe they agreed of, of, of an obligation of £30 million and he's unbelievable, they might say, we could have got 40 we could, we could have got more, who knows? Um, so I think it actually leaves both clubs in a really good position and for Calvin Phillips as well, it sort of takes the pressure off him as well. You can look at it two ways and say, well, maybe he doesn't have the security of a long contract, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think he'll be fine in that respect in terms of finding a club and it doesn't put the pressure on him knowing that there's a a £40 million pound price tag on him or a £35 million price tag on him where he has to live up to that. And if he doesn't, then he's going to be stuck with a club who doesn't really want to pay the money for him if he's had a tough time. So I actually think for, win, for the win. player and both clubs, it's perfect. Win, win, win. Yeah. Dave, we know a lot of clubs were interested in him. Would you say West Ham is the right club for him out of those clubs that were interested? Yeah, I think just going back to what Flex was saying, it feels like everybody's quite relaxed about the whole situation around, you know, a, an option or an obligation not being agreed at this stage. I think, you know, there's a temptation maybe for, for West Ham supporters to get a little bit jittery about that. The fact that they've not been able to, to secure an option to buy. And maybe they might be thinking, oh, you know, he could play well and then move to someone else in the summer. Of course, that might well happen. But I think from both sides, what we're hearing is there's a little bit of relaxation around, OK, we haven't been able to do it now. That's not to say that we won't be able to do it in the summer, what, whatever happens to Calvin Phillips. In terms of other clubs, you know, I think West Ham is the right club for him right now. And I think, you know, given all the speculation that he's pointed to himself, I think it was, you know, significant for him to get this sorted in this particular transfer window. You know, the interest from Crystal Palace was genuine. It was there. He would have gone straight into the team. Perhaps the, 
the financial package <clears throat> on offer from Crystal Palace wouldn't have been able to get close to what West Ham are able to offer and, and perhaps what Manchester City were looking for in terms of covering his wage packet for the rest of the season. Um, Newcastle, I think that the interest from them was genuine in this window, but it seems the timeline on this move has almost counted Newcastle out because they've not been able to shift anyone. We've talked about it for most of the window. Yet anyway, Newcastle haven't been able to shift anyone. Obviously, we're going to go on to talk about potential outgoings at Newcastle. And uh, I think from West Ham's point of view, he'll go straight into the team. It's, uh, you know, he's going to get Premier League action. He's going to get European football. And, you know, I think the prospect of West Ham being on an upward, upward trajectory right now is something that would be a factor too. And the shirt suits him, doesn't it? Some players looks just good. don't look right. Like <laughs> Declan good. Rice looks slightly strange at he in the, in yeah. the Arsenal shirt, but it, it looks right as well. <laughs> right, James, you've been taking a look, haven't you? What kind of impact he can have on this West Ham team? What is he going to give to West Ham? Well, at first, it's a sign of West Ham's ambition and David Moyes' belief in the player that they've been able to bring him to East London in the first place. There's been interest from a number of Premier League clubs and from European giants as well, such as Juventus and Barcelona. And these clubs have not been put off by what has been a forgettable 18 months on the field, at least, for Calvin Phillips. And that's laid bare when you consider the number of minutes he has played since joining Manchester City. Signed for around £42 million in 2022. But look at the percentage of minutes where he's been available, only played in 7.7% of those minutes where he's been able to, to play for Pep Guardiola. Now, those two Premier League starts, as you can see there, they came in May of last year. City had already won the title and their focus was on preparing themselves for the FA Cup final and the Champions League final too. And this season, he's yet to start in the top flight. He's played just 19 Premier League minutes since October. Things clearly haven't worked out at Manchester City and we wait to see if he returns in the summer. But if this is the end, then at least he has some trophies to show for it. Five major trophies in his 18-month spell so far at Man City. But you can see the games that they've come in. Just six competitive starts. I mentioned those two Premier League matches against Chelsea and Brentford in May. Last season, he started just once in the FA Cup, once in the Carabao Cup. In terms of this season, his sole starts came against Newcastle in the Carabao Cup defeat and in that dead rubber in the Champions League against Red Star. Now, West Ham's midfield, we know, has been completely revamped since selling Declan Rice to Arsenal in the summer. They've bolstered their ranks with the signing of James Ward-Prowse, Edson Alvarez. Thomas Socek has been a constant for West Ham over the last four years, and he signed a new contract until 20. 27. So it's going to be interesting to see how David Moyes fits all these pieces into the midfield jigsaw puzzle. So check and Ward Prowse have struggled as a midfield duo. So perhaps we see Alvarez and Calvin Phillips as a double pivot. Maybe Ward Prowse further ahead. So check potentially being the player to find himself on the fringes. But with West Ham fighting on both fronts in the Premier League and the Europa League, all four will be vital in ensuring a successful end to the season. Flex, when you consider the midfield options that David Moyes now has at his disposal, how do you think he'll look to fit Calvin Phillips in? We've seen him as a box-to-box -box midfielder for England, but so successful for Leeds as the, as the deepest player in that number six role. Just quickly, I've got to say, I thought we were going to get a weather update over there. Well. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, it, was that was it was raining as I came in. <laughs> <laughs> was like now. That's absolutely brilliant, James. Thank you for that. Um, how does he fit in? Listen, I, I actually think, like you said, Suchek, Thomas Suchek, actually will probably be the casualty in this. And he's a player who... Sometimes, if he's not in the best form, it could be fairly limited. But when he's in his best form, he's an honest player. He knows his job. He's going to chip in with goals. He's an aerial threat. But like I've said throughout this whole transfer uh, sort of saga with Calvin Phillips waiting to get to West Ham, the best version of Calvin Phillips versus the best version of, Rice, uh, of Suchak, Suchak, should I say, alongside Alvarez, I think would be really what David Moyes is looking for. And you, you see uh, what James read out about the, the quotes from David Moyes about them trying to sign him from before. We've been long admirers. We, we can't wait to have him here. He's playing. <laughs> He's playing. So I think actually him alongside Alvarez, which would free up James Ward-Prowse to go roaming, go behind, um, you know, Jared Bowen, um, obviously Mikel Antonio to come back as well. Or if they want to be a little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more stable, they can play and you can slot back into a three. So it does give them a lot of options. And then when they're ready to maybe go a little bit more direct, Suchek can come in as well and they can mix it up a little bit. So, actually, it gives uh, an extra string to West Ham's yeah. mm. Well, we'd love to hear from some West Ham fans this morning as well. Let us know how happy are you about this low move. Does he look good in the West Ham shirt? Where does he fit into your team? Use the hashtag GMSF.
on X. Not GMSF, sorry, that's the show I normally <laughs> present. <laughs> what is it? Can Good morning, transfer, transfer, transfer Talk. talk. Transfer there we talk. go. Come on. Use, you could use hashtag GMSF, but hashtag Transfer Talk. <laughs> so, Phillips, it's time for now. Manchester City comes to an end. This is what Pep Guardiola had to say about the midfielder yesterday. Hopefully he can play the minutes that he deserves and I could give them to him. I mean, it's just not happened for him here, has it? He's never, it's never appeared as though he could get a regular place in your side. That's what it is. So I wish him, it was an, I said many times, an exceptional human being. And, and even a football player, otherwise would not be in a, in a, in a national team from, from UK. And so hopefully he can prove what, what, what really it is. Right, so what is going to happen in the summer? Do you think, Dave, there's any possibility of him playing for City again? Difficult to see right now, just it, despite what Pep Guardiola has, has said there about, you know, there is an opportunity for him to come back to Manchester City in the summer. It just doesn't seem likely, given the track record that we've already pointed out uh, today. And, you know, I, I'm not expecting Pep Guardiola to come out yesterday and kind of dump him on live TV. It's just not going to happen. And he's always liked him, hasn't he, as he, well? Exactly, he's, he's always liked him. to do him. with that. And also, you know, if he turns around and says there's no future for Calvin here, then it damages Manchester City's negotiating position when it comes to the summer as well, because clubs might try and lowball them on the fee. So I wouldn't expect that. But it does look difficult to see a future for Calvin Phillips at Manchester City. And, you know, we've pointed out the number of starts he's made. But even if he's on the bench for Manchester City, Pep Guardiola, just in general, in broad terms, doesn't like to use substitutions. They've made the fewest substitutions this season in the, in the Premier League and it averages out at 2.6 per game, you know, even though there's five available to him. He doesn't like to change things mid-game. So even if Calvin Phillips thinks I can go back and maybe I'll, I'll get a few opportunities off the bench to impress, it's not going to happen. I think Dave made some great points there and Pep Guardiola was never going to shut the door on, on Calvin Phillips yesterday, but it felt like he shut the door on him in December with his comments when he said... I visualised some things and visualised the team. I struggled to see him in it. I feel so sorry for my decision, which almost felt like con concluding remarks that that was the, the end for Calvin Phillips. So I wouldn't expect to see him in, in a Manchester City shirt again. But of course, they want to keep that negotiating power because if he does brilliantly at West Ham, if he does well in the Euros for, for England, then perhaps his fee could, could, could go up and up. And in the end, Man City will probably think if they, they get a decent chunk from him in the summer. It's been a rare failure from their recruitment department. It hasn't been the right fit, but it won't be too bad financially if they are able to get a good fee from him in the summer. We wish Calvin Phillips well. It's been a really difficult time. He's a great character. Gareth Southgate has been so loyal to him, and now his loyalty will be repaid because he's going to get some opportunities for West Ham now.